morning. Today is Thursday, June the 3rd. We're recording today for two reasons. The first is that we've had uh, live streaming issues the last few weeks at church, and we wanted to uh, test to see, things, uh, see that things are working again. And the second is to have a devotional for uh, Trinity Sunday, uh, which many people missed because we were having video issues. If you're following along, we are doing Responsive Prayer 2 in Lutheran Service Book on page 285. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forests bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading is from John chapter 3. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading today, which is the Gospel for Trinity Sunday, shares four verses with the fourth Sunday in Lent, the last four verses, which include the famous Bible verse, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Of course, during Lent, we're going to focus on the part of that verse that says, God gave his only Son. 
the sacrifice of Jesus. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man was lifted up to take away the sins of the world. Today, we look at the first part of that famous verse, For God so loved the world. It's a simple sentence, really. God, the subject, love, the verb, the world, object. Who is this God? This God is the God who reveals himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, both in our Gospel reading, where Jesus tells Nicodemus that one must be born of the Spirit, and the Father gives the Son, God gives the Son, but also in so many places throughout Scripture, explicitly in Matthew, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Or in 2 Corinthians, that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. He is also present in uh, the creation. Uh, the Spirit of God hovers over the face of the water, and God said, God, Father, speak, Son, let there be light. That is who our God is. And just as you would not want to have your identity stolen, so God does not want his identity stolen by other gods. I'm always interested in people who say, I can commune with God just anywhere. How about the lake? Wherever in the wilderness. Well, there may be a God, but that's not the God who identifies himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That God says, through his holy writers, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Or David in the psalm, I was glad when they said to me, come to the house of the Lord. Or Jesus, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Or in that verse I quoted earlier, baptize and teach. These are things that happen in the church. They are part of the church. The God who is our God, the God who loves the world, is the God who says those things. So we need to get God's identity right. But we also need to understand the object of the sentence, world. Now, the world is not synonymous with the earth. There's another Greek word for that. The Greek word here is cosmos. At its roots, it talks about ordering things. And it is connected with the, uh, the word cosmetology, the word cosmetics, when we order our faces and arrange our bodies in a certain way to make them look attractive. Cosmos also has meanings like you might find in Carl Sagan's uh, video series of the same name, where the cosmos is everything that there is. But especially in the Gospel of John, the cosmos has a little bit different meaning. The cosmos is really that which is arrayed against God. Jesus comes into the world and the world does not know him. The ruler of this world is the devil, the, the Satan, the demonic one. Uh, the world hates the disciples because it hates Jesus. And therefore, it's all that much more extraordinary what God says in this verse, what Jesus says. For God so loved the world. That is, he loved that which hated him. And which, apart from those who are in Christ Jesus and are in the world but not of the world, still hate him. God's reaction to hatred is love. That's good news for us, because again, according to Scripture, we are born as enemies of God, and we live in active hatred of God, until God, the Holy Spirit, through His Word, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, comes to us and turns us, converts us, whether it is in baptism, whether it is through the words of a friend, whether it is through studying Scripture, or even like the famous philosopher Simone Weil, reading a poem by a Christian poet. And they are converted. And they are turned. And they become children of God. And so now we are encouraged to love as God loves. To love those who hate us. To pray for those who persecute us. It's called challenge. And we only do it with the aid of God our Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But the good news for us is that God has revealed himself to us, shown his love to us, so that we might believe and have eternal life. Amen. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. In the day of my trouble I call upon you, for you answer me. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.